Hi friends, it's Carol from Crinkle Path Journals. My voice is improving a little, so I'm coming back with a Thrifty Thursday. It still gets tired really quick, so I'm not doing any long videos until this is all better. My December weekly will probably wait until February at this rate. What can you do? I wanted to show you my friend Paul, who is the book researcher and pricer at my favorite thrift store. He gets books occasionally that are very precious and they are not in condition that they can sell them. And then he calls me and he's done this once before and he called me last week and had me come down and he showed me that these books and told me a little bit about them. So they are covered in leather and this is called tree calf so calf leather but the tree design is a specific thing they do to the leather on the books to give them a tree looking design on the top with chemicals and you can see that it's on all four covers that they have done this technique and he suggested that I get some leather paste, not a liquid, and treat them because he said it'll really bring out more of the, of the fine details. They are actually dictionaries of volume one and volume two, and they are from 1776. So think for you, those of us in the U.S., that was the year the Declaration of Independence was signed. And they are in Old English. Did you have to read Beowulf in high school? <laughs> so you'll see the S's look like our F's now. It's Old English. So it to read it takes a little bit of adjusting but it is readable it's a historical classical dictionary the pages feel like they're made out of some kind of fabric and he said that there's no acid in this kind of paper he's was able to tell me a little bit about it. They just really have a cool feeling to them. And of course the covers are beautiful. I have a custom journal order and I'm seriously considering going ahead and using, restoring one of these covers and look at the spines, they're just gorgeous. And so I feel like they deserve to have a new life. So I appreciate Paul so much reaching out to me when he finds things like this. And he's perfectly happy to let me do with it what I want after the fact. And he's happy they're getting utilized again and he just feels like the thrift store would have to toss them aside anyway because they're not in a condition to sell the covers are all detached i should have said that all right next i purchased this book from the collection that those other books came in and it is green leather but it has like a suede feeling to it. You can see the nap on there. And San Francisco is the closest big city to us. And uh, we've spent a lot of time exploring that, especially in college. And so this is a really fun book to have. And this is copyright 1924. I thought it was cute. There's this little postcard inside that is about California winters and it says we miss the snow and the cold and the wind storms at winter time in Southern California but we get the sunshine the fruit and the flowers and the turkey and cranberry and celery 
We miss the hail, the cyclone, the blizzard, but get the ocean breeze and the showers. It's the place where spring comes in the summer, the summer comes in the fall, the fall comes in the winter, and winter doesn't come at all. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. And that would not be true of San Francisco. It's really cold in the summers in San Francisco and warmer in the fall. So it has these really beautiful little sketches and these ornate beginnings to the paragraphs. And it's just a favorite place for us to explore. And so it's fun to see places that we go still today, how they looked in 1924. Or probably even earlier. This is an outdoor amphitheater that's still standing in Golden Gate Park. I have a picture of my daughter standing in there. Um, let's see. There's Alcatraz, the famous prison on an island in the bay. Uh, there was a picture of Union Square. Let's see if I can find that one. I seem to who have skipped it. There it is, with the famous statue in the middle on the high pedestal. Anyway, I, this one won't get used in junk journals because it's going in my personal collection of rare books. Then I got a few odds and ends that were tucked in things. First is this 1927 advertisement for chimney pieces, English chairs, interior decoration of the 18th century. <laughs> so it's just uh, advertising. I thought that was pretty cool. And then I got these look like they came from some kind of Asian game, and they are what feels to be rice paper, uh, but it's got something about a card game, the suits and pairs, and it's like something you would have when you're playing the game to keep track of your plays, and then these are exactly the same. And they're also the rice paper. And they have the pictures that are on the cards. Which are very pretty. So anyway, that was just a little bit of stuff that was tucked in to the uh, those really old books. Then let's move into the 70s a little bit. I grabbed this little tropical freshwater aquaria book it has beautiful matte pages and colorful pictures kind of reminds me of the little golden book field guides but the pictures of the fish are amazing and when we were first married we had a little freshwater tropical tank and my daughter, when she was born, loved to sit kind of over the arm of the couch, leaning on her elbows and watching the fish when she was just like 10 or 12 weeks old. And so we have lots of fun memories of having the fish tanks. Uh, but this would make great entries for journals or it would make good pages for a 70s journal this book is from 1971 if i didn't already say that and then this one is from 1976 but it is a replica copy from 1876 you can see these are the reprintings and it doesn't have a lot of pictures it has a few but not a lot of pictures inside but i just loved the cover mostly 
and it was all about preserving our forests. So I thought that was fun. We're nature people, and so that would be good in a journal. Then I got from the Christmas sale in the thrift store, I bought some more of this old tinsel garland just because I really had fun with the silver, putting it in some of my journals over Christmas, and I thought it would be fun to have some gold for next year. Another find in the craft section was this hand-stitched Raggedy Ann and Andy, which I thought would make a really cute cover for a 70s journal. It says born name and weight so it was obviously done so that they could put in the baby's information but if i decide to use it on a journal cover uh, i could always unstitch the words if i wanted to or if the journal was shorter that probably wouldn't be on anyway so I just thought it was just really cute. Look at the flowers on her dress and his little checks, like little gingham shirt he's wearing. And it was only 50 cents, I think. Oh no, it was a dollar, but still all that handwork for a dollar. Yeah, that was, that was worth it. Okay, last but not least, I got vintage wrapping paper. I got three packs and they were, I think these were 50 cents a piece. So I didn't see a date on them, but I would guess they're at least 80s. I remember this wrapping paper from when my nephew was born in 1985. Uh, he had gifts wrapped in that. So I'm going to guess that that's about when these two are from. And they are unopened. Yeah, see, 50 cents. They're unopened, and I just think they were really fun. I'm heading into doing that 80s journal next, and so I thought those would be a good addition. And then I haven't even opened this one. This is much fuller than both of those. Let me grab a scissor. Yeah, there's lots more pieces in this one, but it was the same price, probably because they might not be complete but there's this kind of Christmas looking sheet and that seems complete and then this is like a almost well it's very lightweight almost a tissue I'm trying to get just one layer yeah I think it's just really thin it's not tissue but isn't that a pretty silver and purple? And then also this one. This seems like a full sheet. That looks very 90s to me. <laughs> There's a little slip of this strawberry piece. That'd be cute with strawberry shortcake stuff. And then this is a, looks like a full sheet of the stamp collection and then there's a little remnant as well and then a uh, kind of silver and taupe stripe like a wedding paper watercolor daylilies that looks 90s as well uh, and then some paw prints. Those are just cute. I don't know. These seem a little newer. Not as shiny or as slick but thif and thicker than the other papers. This looks 80s to me. I, I remember... I think it was my sister had wallpaper that looked kind of like this. They're all current brands. This one has a little red marking on it, but 
It's cute. I love this print. And then this looks very 80s to me, too. All the hearts and rainbows were big in the 80s. <laughs> so I think I got some really fun stuff this time. And I wouldn't have probably even have gone in during the holidays other than Paul called and I went running when Paul calls. And you can see why, because these books are just beyond amazing. And I'm really excited to have have this option for a cover for my next uh, journal that's been ordered. Thanks for coming along today. I hope you had a really happy new year. Hopefully my voice will keep getting stronger. Thank you to all of you for subscribing, for liking, and for your kind comments. I love hearing from you. Take care. Bye.